Today is Wednesday, October 26, 2022. Welcome to today's daily prayers. Our theme this week is God can change lives. Let us pray. Almighty God, send your transforming power into my life as I seek to serve you this day. Grant unto me wisdom, courage, grace, and strength to faithfully fulfill the ministry to which you have called me. In the name of Christ, amen. Our psalm this week is Psalm 19. Heaven is declaring God's glory. The sky is proclaiming God's handiwork. One day gushes the news to the next, and one night informs another what needs to be known. Of course, there is no speech, no words. Their voices can't be heard, but their sound extends throughout the world. Their words reach the ends of the earth. God has made a tent in heaven for the sun. The sun is like a groom coming out of his honeymoon suite. Like a warrior, it thrills at running its course. It rises in one end of the sky. Its circuit is complete at the other. Nothing escapes its heat. True life's instruction is perfect, reviving one's very being. True life's laws are faithful, making naive people wise. True life's regulations are right, gladdening the heart. True life's commands are pure, giving light to the eyes. Honoring true life is correct, lasting forever. True life's judgments are true. All of these are righteous. They are more desirable than gold, than tons of pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, even dripping off the honeycomb. No doubt about it, your servant is enlightened by them. There is great reward in keeping them. But can anyone know what they've accidentally done wrong? Clear me of any unknown sin and save your servant from willful sins. Don't let them rule me. Then I'll be completely blameless. I'll be innocent of great wrongdoing. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you, true life, my rock and my redeemer. Our daily scripture is John chapter 9. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man who was blind from birth. Jesus' disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned so that he was born blind, this man or his parents? Jesus answered, Neither he nor his parents. This happened so that God's mighty works might be displayed in him. While it's daytime, we must do the works of the one who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After he said this, he spit on the ground, made mud with the saliva, and smeared the mud on the man's eyes. Jesus said to him, Go, 
wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means sent. So the man went away and washed. When he returned, he could see. The man's neighbors and those who used to see him when he was a beggar said, Isn't this the man who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is. And others said, No, it's someone who looks like him. But the man said, Yes, it's me. So they asked him, How are you now able to see? He answered, the man they called Jesus made mud, smeared it on my eyes, and said, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. So I went and washed, and then I could see. They asked, Where is this man? He replied, I don't know. Then they led the man who had been born blind to the Pharisees. Now, Jesus made the mud and smeared it on the man's eyes on a Sabbath day. So Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. The man told them, he put mud on my eyes. I washed and now I see. Some Pharisees said, this man isn't from God because he breaks the Sabbath law. Others said, how can a sinner do miraculous signs like these? So they were divided. Some of the Pharisees questioned the man who had been born blind again. What do you have to say about him since he healed your eyes? The man replied, he's a prophet. The Jewish leaders didn't believe the man had been blind and received his sight until they called for his parents. The Jewish leaders asked them, is this your son? Are you saying he was born blind? How can he now see? His parents answered, we know he is our son. We know he was born blind, but we don't know how he now sees, and we don't know who healed his eyes. Ask him, he's old enough to speak for himself. His parents said this, because they feared the Jewish authorities. This is because the Jewish authorities had already decided that whoever confessed Jesus to be the Christ would be expelled from the synagogue. That's why his parents said, he's old enough, ask him. Therefore they called a second time for the man who had been born blind and said to him, give glory to God. We know this man is a sinner. The man answered, I don't know whether he's a sinner. Here's what I do know. I was blind, and now I see. They questioned him, What did he do to you? How did he heal your eyes? He replied, I already told you, and you didn't listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? They insulted him. You are his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. We know that God spoke to Moses, but we don't know where this man is from. The man answered, this is incredible. You don't know where he is from, yet he healed my eyes. We know that God doesn't listen to sinners. God listens to anyone who is devout and does God's will. No one has ever heard of a healing of the eyes of someone born blind. If this man wasn't from God, he couldn't do this. They responded, you were born completely in sin. How is it that you dare to teach us? Then they expelled him. Jesus heard they had expelled the man born blind. Finding him, Jesus said, do you believe in the human one? He answered, Who is he, sir? I want to believe in him. Jesus said, You have seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. The man said, Master, I believe. And he worshipped Jesus. 
Jesus said, I have come into the world to exercise judgment so that those who don't see can see and those who see will become blind. Some Pharisees who were with him heard what he said and asked, Surely we aren't blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you wouldn't have any sin. But now that you say we see, your sin remains. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. It can be tempting to blame people for the difficult situations they are in. Jesus teaches us here that sin may not be the cause of their troubles, so we should be careful about laying blame. Think of someone you feel has ended up in a difficult situation because of their sin. Might there be a reason other than their own sinfulness that led to that situation? How can you pray for them? The religious leaders were angry at Jesus because they believed he had broken an important religious law by healing on the Sabbath. Jesus had acted out of love for the blind man. This is why Jesus teaches us that the real law is the law of love. What religious law do you place a lot of emphasis on? How might the law of love be calling you to be less rigid in that particular religious law. The man's parents were afraid to tell what they knew because they were afraid of being banned from the synagogue. Have you ever been in a church where you were afraid to say something or to ask questions about faith? How do you think God feels about churches that do that? Our reading today comes from Life Essential by George MacDonald. The words of the Lord are the seed sown by the sower. Into our hearts they must fall, that they may grow. Meditation and prayer must water them, and obedience keep them in the sunlight. Thus will they bear fruit for the Lord's gathering. Let us pray. Jesus, you were always willing to reach out in love to those who were hurting or marginalized. 
May we do the same, regardless of what others may think of us. We pray for those who are sick, injured, living with a disability, or otherwise physically different. May they know that they are seen by you, cared for by you, and loved by you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those whose life circumstances or other issues have pushed them outside of community. May they find in you and your church the love and community they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are so focused on following the letter of the law that they fail to live out the spirit of the law, which is love. May they come to see that love is the one law we must not break. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray as Jesus taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Receive this benediction. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may, with one voice, glorify the God and Father of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Go in peace.